What's up everybody, welcome back to Slow Your Roll, I'm Cody, and today we're talking about something that needs to be talked about, okay? We're talking about how absolutely innovative the Prime modifier is for DC20. So, this is something that if you could put it into a homebrew rule for really any tabletop game, it's guaranteed to straight up make that game better, okay? So here we go, check this out. The Prime modifier in DC20 is equal to your character's highest attribute and it is what is used to make all of the combat related checks in the game so as far as attacking goes spell casting any of that stuff right that is dependent on your prime modifier specifically this means and there's been an example that the dungeon coach has done oh yeah the dungeon coach is the creator of DC20. DC20 is a tabletop role-playing game that is currently in alpha and it's already amazing. Whatever, here we go. So one of the examples that's common is like a charismatic barbarian, right? This typically barbarians are just like might or strength based. Might is the strength attribute in DC20. And these barbarians, right? They were just like, they'd rage and they'd run into battle and they just hit stuff, just like just dumb flailing until you hit and break everything. And that works, and it's fun, and it's awesome. But what if that wasn't exactly the plan that someone had for their barbarian? What if someone wanted it to be more of like a, sure, I want rage, and I want some of the big mechanics that the barbarian has by default, but I want it to be charisma-based instead. They can make their charisma modifier, their charisma attribute, they can make that their highest attribute, and then their spell attacks, well, for barbarian wouldn't be spell attacks then their weapon attacks and everything based around that would be made with their prime modifier which would be equal to charisma this means it can look something like this imagine a hulking barbarian with bulging muscles but instead of relying solely on brute strength they inspire their allies with eloquent speeches and unwavering charisma. At the same time, their battle cries rally their companions and intimidate and terrify the enemy, right? This is a general on the battlefield. And then you just went from taking your barbarian, that's just this big hulking dummy, to this interestingly fleshed out character immediately just with attributes. Like you can make a backstory around your attributes alone in DC20. That's huge. So this character would be, I don't know, imagine something like Gruff, right? Like uh, meet Gruff Ironheart, the charismatic barbarian. Gruff doesn't just swing his massive ax. He motivates his party with stirring speeches. His high charisma allows him to lead, inspire, and even negotiate with enemies mid-battle. Who needs raw strength when you can win hearts and minds? There you go. There's Gruff, right? Another example. We got a dim-witted wizard. Okay? Wizards are meant to be kind of smart. They're usually portrayed as brilliant spellcasters. But what if the wizard is a little bit, you know, not as bright as the rest of us, okay? So what if instead of intelligence, we use this charisma again, but for a wizard? Their intelligence might not be off the charts, but they compensate with sheer determination and force of will. That's another thing with DC20. Charisma has been a little bit more linked with uh, willpower to resist uh, like fear things um, and several other things related to that. So charisma is also a little bit more in the wheelhouse of like power of will, which makes sense. I like that. So their spells manifest through sheer stubbornness, like lifting a boulder with telekinesis because they refuse to accept defeat. Maybe meet Zog. Say hello to Zog the Unwise, our unconventional wizard. Zog's intelligence isn't impressive, but he's tenacious. His spells, well, they're more like Zog's stubborn manifestations. Fireball? Nah, Zog just glares at the ground until it combusts. Who needs book smarts when you've got sheer willpower? There you go. So there's Zog the Unwise. Another example. All right, but that's enough for charisma. Let's switch over to agility, something like that, right? As another attribute in uh, DC20. Uh, by the way, for attributes sake, if you haven't, if you know nothing about the game, there are only four attributes as opposed to D&D &D 6, and they phenomenally found a way to make all of the attributes matter 
They're linked to things in the newest update for the alpha coming out. It's actually going to be an attribute overhaul. And I was, thankfully, a little bit of a part of uh, helping to get that figured out. But anyway, this overhaul is going to make it so that every single one of these attributes is worth all of its salt, right? Every attribute will matter. Um, might is going to be linked to HP. Agility largely is linked to armor class um, and a lot of other things that are kind of hard to go into. It's like your ability to like see how far you jump, uh, fall damage, a lot of stuff. So agility is important. Um, charisma has its own special mechanics that are really, really, really cool. And not too complex, but they make charisma worthwhile even in combat. So you'll have to check out some of the dungeon coaches stuff um, about that. And intelligence um, allows you to actually perfect more skills. Like you can be more proficient with skills, not that proficiency is a thing in, D or in uh, DC 20 because it's less confusing than that. It's mastery instead and it's good. But intelligence makes you able to just nail out more skills. It actually makes you more efficiently, like cognitively competent. And that's awesome, I love that. So anyway, back to this concept of the prime modifier, right? Let's move on to one more type of character, the paladin. Okay, here we go. Paladins are often associated with heavy armor and unwavering devotion. But what if your paladin is nimble and quick instead? Uh, this agility, allows them to dodge attacks, parry blows, and dance through combat. Instead of a stoic oath, they follow the path of the Whirling Blade. So, I suppose that looks something like this. Introducing Seraphina Swiftblade, the agile paladin. Seraphina wears light armor, wields twin short swords, and pirouettes through battle. Her high agility lets her dodge attacks like a dancer, and her smites more like graceful radiant strikes. Enemies never see her coming. So, it could be a lot more, something like that. And the cool thing is, it'd be so easy to use this system. There's even rules for it in the alpha, for what I'm about to say, technically. It'd be so easy to use this system and technically have a shield and be able to flavor your character to using two short swords while still using the passives and awesome stuff that the shield would give, like protecting your allies if they're within uh, like close range of you in combat and things like that. You could totally make this happen. And again, all you're doing to build this agile paladin, Seraphina Swiftblade, is you're making a paladin, but your highest attribute is agility instead of might or if you're a spell caster paladin then like charisma or whatever but you can do this and it'd be so simple using this system so again i just wanted to absolutely tote on tote gloat float on the idea that the prime modifier is actually incredible it's incredible it will make dc20 truly stand out for exactly what it stands for of course dc20 i don't know if you knew it stands for dungeons and dragons crusher 20. um that's not true but it might as well be uh so anyway let me know what you guys think of this and check out a bunch more i'm gonna have the alpha linked in the description okay um as like a little affiliate link thing so that'll help out alan and that'll help out us too that'd be awesome if you want to check it out uh but Alan has so many videos. I'll link a couple videos that are related to the Prime Modifier topic or whatever uh, in the description below as well. And just thank you guys so much. Please just pay attention to this game system because I legitimately believe it's going to be the best. It's going to be the best. Straight up the best. So, thank you. <laughs>